So here we go. Now today, I don't know if you, I guess you can't see that, so this is my Melchizedek. Now I'm sure that a lot of you under, you know, have heard of Melchizedek and understand uh, who Melchizedek was, but we're going to just get a little refreshment here. So we have um, Abraham getting blessed by the Melchizedek and um, the bread and the wine that the Melchizedek brought to Abraham to show him how to do this or to just uh, break bread with him and then Abraham gave the Melchizedek a tenth of everything of the spoils. Okay, so Shaul teaches about this moment when uh, Melchizedek and Abram meet. Um, for this, in Hebrews 7, 1 through 3, he says, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of most high Elohim, met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He is first, by translation of his name, king of righteousness. So there we, we know this Melchizedek is a king and he's a king of righteousness. And then he is also king of Salem. That is king of peace. So we know that Salem means peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the son of Elohim. He continues a priest forever. Okay, so what we have here is it is not Yeshua, all right? Uh, it, it, that The Melchizedek priest that came to meet Abraham was not Yeshua. Paul makes it very clear. He was like Yeshua. So just kind of stop for a second. When you understand the Melchizedek priesthood, the, the Melchizedek priests are going to be like who? Yeah, they're going to be like Messiah. They're going to be like Yeshua. They're going to resemble Yeshua. Isn't that the whole reason we eat of him? The drink of him? Get him in us? I mean, this is the whole point of unleavened bread, right? Uh, Hag Hamatzo in the spring, right after Pesach, is about eating of Yeshua to get him in us so that we begin to resemble him, right? So that this is, this is, how, this is part of how the priesthood works. All right. Melchizedek is greater than Aaron. So one of Shaul or Paul's uh, main points in the right, his writings in the New Testament or in the Brit Hadashah, especially in Hebrews, is he's trying to make a point that Melchizedek is, is superior to the Aaronic order. Um, so Shaul's main point of his letter to the Hebrews in Dysphoria, and this is where his letter, he was speaking to the scattered Israel that was outside, they're wanting to come in. Um, uh, he is trying to prove that Melchizedek, he does prove that Melchizedek is greater than Aaron. He is greater because Yeshua is of the order of Melchizedek, not of Aaron. He couldn't be a Levite priest if he wanted to be. Yeshua is of a different priestly order than that of Aaron because then there is a necessity of change in the law. So in Hebrews 7, 12, we're going to talk about this some more later, but it says that there is a, when there's a change in priests and there is a necess, then there's a necessary change in law. Well, you have Aaron and the Aaronic order, which is the Levites, and you have Yeshua, totally different um, tribe, not from, or, or not from the line of uh, Aaron. He's not from the tribe of Levi. He's from another one, and uh, which Moses didn't speak of when it had to do with priests. And uh, when there is a change from one order to the next, there's also a change in law. So we're going to rightly divide the word of truth to figure out what this change is and which law we're talking about. Okay. Uh, Psalms 110.4 says, Yehovah has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. So Yehovah was talking to Yeshua through prophetically through a King David to say that what was going to happen. It was a prophecy of what was going to happen, that uh, Yehovah was going to raise up his son in the order, his order, the order of the Melech Zedek, which is the king of righteousness. That's Yehovah. And, um, and he's going to be a priest forever because the Melech, and because the Melchizedek order is forever, because it, it because it is Yehovah's and Yehovah is forever. It's, okay, we're gonna get there. <laughs> so five insights into the Melchizedek. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, five insights into the Melchizedek. Number one, uh, the priesthood of Melchizedek is one of royalty. So he was a king. So it's a priesthood. Uh, it's a kingly priesthood. It is a righteous priesthood. It is a peaceful priesthood. It's a pe it's kingdom of. Uh, 
priesthood of peace, Salem, because Salem means peace, and peace is a natural result of righteousness, of right doings. Peace, right? I, I think that's what we all want is like, we want peace, and in order to have peace, Papa knows how to have peace, and it's by doing things according to him. All right, and then the Melchizedek priesthood was based on his personal qualification, not his gen, uh, gene genealogical line. I don't quite know how to say that, but um, but not by his genealogy. So you see in uh, the the Tanakh over and over, you see you know genealogies. There's a ton of genealogies, and and you were if you were part of the Levit Levitical the tribe. Uh, Levites and stuff, you were supposed to keep a genealogy so that uh, you could serve at the temple as a priest. Yeshua's priesthood, this royal Melchizedek priesthood, isn't based on genealogy, it's based on um, his personal qualification. And you see how Shaul uh, clears that up in, in Hebrews, we'll get to that in a little bit, but um, Shaul makes it very clear that it wasn't because of Yeshua's genealogy that gave him this priesthood, that Yehovah gave him this priesthood, it was because of who he was and um, how he qualified to be that, that priest, uh, the high priest in the order of Melech Sadiq. Um, so it is also, and lastly, number five, it is a, an eternal priest, as the understanding in verse three there says that it was an eternal priesthood having neither beginning of days nor end of life. And it's talking about the priest part, not the human part.